there's always volcanic activity happening around the world, on land and even underwater. When a volcano violently explodes, it can become one of the most violent natural disasters on this planet. They release so much lava, ash and gases into the atmosphere that they're even able to alter the global climate. Today on Feed My Curiosity, we will look at volcanoes. How do they erupt? Where do they erupt? And what are some of the consequences that can result from volcanic eruptions? Let's find out on Feed My Curiosity. Subscribe to our channel if you like learning about science, technology, history and other subjects. Let's first take a look at the formation of magma. The Earth has four layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. The deeper you go down the layers, the hotter it gets. Within the upper part of the mantle lies molten rock, or rock that exists in liquid form. This is also referred to as magma, and there's three ways magma forms. The first is decompression melting. Hot materials from the mantle rise to areas with lower pressure. The melting point is lower at areas of lower pressure, allowing the formation of magma to take place. The second way is through transfer of heat. The Earth's crust is usually cold, but when hot liquid rock touches the crust, the temperature of the liquid rock cools, and at the same time, the solid rock heats up. It then melts, which forms into magma. The third way is through flux melting. When water or carbon dioxide are added to rock, it can melt it at lower temperatures. This happens at subduction zones, which are areas where tectonic plates collide. They collide when one tectonic plate slides underneath the other, piercing into the mantle. When that happens, water at the seafloor subducts into the mantle and lowers its temperature. So how does this magma reach the surface? Since magma is lighter than rock, it rises upwards toward the surface. While this is happening, magma becomes thick due to gas bubbles forming inside of the magma. The magma finds its way through the Earth's vents and fissures and reaches the surface. Magma is then referred to as lava. If the magma is runny like water, then gases trapped inside can easily escape. The magma flows out and makes a smooth entrance to the surface. However, if the magma is thick like toothpaste, gases remain trapped inside and have a hard time escaping. Pressure continues to build until the gases force themselves to escape, resulting in a loud and violent explosion. Magma is launched high into the air and becomes rock that breaks apart into fragments. These fragments are called tephra and can come in various sizes. They can be tiny particles of ash or large boulders. Before we get into the consequences of volcanic eruptions, let's take a pop quiz. Which of the Earth's layers consist of magma? A. Mantle B. Crust C. Outer core or D. Inner core Do you think you know the answer? Comment below! Volcanic eruptions that violently explode are extremely dangerous. Ashy tephra can be carried into the atmosphere up to thousands of kilometers downwind. When they fall back down, they have the capability of suffocating living things, while larger tephra can crush anything it falls on. Flowing lava moving down volcanoes can make their way to nearby communities and destroy buildings and infrastructure. However, because they move slowly, people living in these communities have ample time to evacuate. When volcanic eruptions are large enough, they can alter climates and the environment. Gases that are released can vary from one volcano to another, but water vapor, carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide are the most abundant gases. These are released and injected into the stratosphere, along with aerosol droplets and ash. As a direct greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide is a contributing factor to global warming, while sulfur dioxide promotes global cooling, as well as ozone destruction and the production of volcanic smog. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines on June 12, 1991 remains one of the largest eruptions of the century. A 20 million ton sulfur dioxide cloud was injected into the stratosphere. It was the largest cloud of its kind ever recorded by satellites. 
Sulfate aerosol was formed from the cloud, which increased the reflection of radiation from the sun away from the Earth, which caused global cooling. Ozone destruction also took place, which led to the lowest ever recorded ozone levels. Volcanoes are also a key part of land formation. Land can form via cinder cones, composite volcanoes, and shield volcanoes, as well as lava domes. When lava cools off, it forms a solid rock known as igneous rock. The Columbia Plateau is an example of a land formation in which layers of basalt have formed the plateau. What are some other interesting volcano facts that you know and would like to share? Do you know of any other major volcanic eruptions that occurred? Leave your thoughts and comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, subscribe to our channel if you like learning about science, technology, history, and other subjects. And now, onto the results of our pop quiz. Which of the Earth's layers consist of magma? A. Mantle B. Crust C. Outer core or D. Inner core If you answered A. Mantle, congratulations, you're correct! If you are incorrect, don't worry, you'll have another chance to try again in our next video. Thank you for joining us on Feed My Curiosity. Take care!